What's up YouTube, Trevor Steele here with Flat Top Paramotors coming at you with a, another video. Today's video, I am going to explain a few tips on how to do a perfect forward launch no matter what weather conditions you're in, no matter what environment you're in, no matter what's going on. I'm gonna explain the exact steps, I'm gonna explain the exact little details that are gonna help you just perfect every forward launch. I'm also gonna explain the pitfalls and the mistakes that people typically make, and I'm gonna show you quite a few examples. I got a camera set up on that side, I got a camera set up on this side. Hopefully the wind will cooperate and we're gonna get an awesome video. I'm gonna be talking after the fact, uh, doing what I call future Trevor, to show you exactly what I'm doing. So let's do it. Okay. So when I said last video, I spent most of my time messing around with GoPros, I mean it. Okay, so the first thing that is the biggest priority when it comes to nailing a forward launch is making sure that you're set up perfectly into that wind. If the wind is coming from, well, let's say those houses, and I try and launch that way, I'm in for a treat. It ain't happening. It ain't gonna happen. But if I launch directly into the wind, which is coming directly from those houses, I have a much higher chance of actually succeeding the forward launch. Because that wing is gonna turn and just fly directly into the wind. Now if I can get enough airspeed, I can turn in the forward launch. But when I first start, when I first make that initial go, it wants to go into the wind, whatever direction the wind is coming, coming from. So it's important that I too launch into the wind because then I'm not fighting the glider in its direction and if I'm trying to make too many corrections or use too much brake when it's not moving fast enough, uh, as in it's like, you know, I'm only running three miles an hour and I'm trying to yank three feet of brake to have it completely turn directions, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna freaking happen. So it's super important you try and launch into the wind, then you can turn. So if the wind was coming from that tree right there, I'd set up over here, launching towards the tree, and then I would turn after I get the glider up. So, big important thing with trims on a Dominator. This is Dominator specific. If you're launching, put the trims out. Out means that you don't have any pull through this buckle. Put the trims out. Once you get in the air, pull the trims down. Launch with the trims out, land with them down, fly with them down. Bingo, okay. So, super big important step number one, making sure you're launching into the wind. Okay, let's do it. Big important step number two, you gotta run like you freaking mean it, man. Forward launches are not just like a, eh, maybe I'll do it. It's like a, nah man, you gotta give it every freaking thing you got because there ain't nothing worse than just dragging that glider right behind you, it not coming up and you not getting up. It is all about the go. Think of it kind of like this. This is an example we use at training for when you're lifting the glider up. When you go to throw a paper airplane, you don't just toss the paper airplane, right? No, 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 you throw the paper airplane. You mean it, you put some effort into it, depending on the situation, right? Well, when you go to launch, when you go to lift that glider up, dude, you don't just like, eh, maybe I'll lift it up. No, you give that everything you've got. Once that glider starts to come up, that's when you start to get onto the throttle. So, that's what the other camera angles are for, me to explain what exactly I'm doing when I'm doing it. So here we go. Now, when you're hooking in, you see I'm leaning forward. When I lean forward, the riser kind of looks like this, with the brake back here and the A up here, because I hooked in with the A on the front side, and when it comes up above me, A will be on the front. So I reach straight down, pop this brake off, reach straight down, pop this brake off. When I just kind of hang out, they kind of do the order. Thumb hooks, thumb hooks. Then I kind of flick them back and stand up. Now, I'm ready to launch. I kind of look to my left, look to my right, kind of find that center, and again, I give it every freaking thing I got. Lift, 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 lift. All 
Okay guys, future Trevor here. I'm gonna try and break down everything that I can and give a great overview so that you guys can take this video, use it, and improve your forward launches. So let's get right to the first piece. Piece number one. All right guys, so you'll notice here, if we look at that wing, you'll see I'm pulling gentle left brake. Now, I didn't just initially pull left brake, I waited until the glider had passed that sweet spot. It had passed the point to where any brake's gonna cause it to collapse. I got the glider above me, and then I turned it left because I didn't have that much stace. I turned it left and followed it around to the left. You guys can see here, I've turned to the left, and as I was running, here's a few things to know. The first one to know is I didn't just stuff brakes and run down the field. And stuffing brakes and running down the field is a big no-no if you actually want to get into the air. Reason why is your glider needs to reach airspeed. It has a certain airspeed depending on your weight, depending on the altitude, and depending on the size of the glider. It needs to reach a certain speed before it's ready to get into the air. So if I just run stuffing a bunch of brake the entire time, I might not ever reach that airspeed in order to get me into the air. So I get it above me, I stop it with a little bit of brakes to make sure it doesn't overfly me and frontal. I then ease my hands back up lean back into that power so that I'm not doing the running, instead it's pushing me, and I let it accelerate to the point to where I'm ready to get in the air. Then, once I've reached that airspeed, I pull about six inches to 12 inches of brake. As you noticed in this video, I ran, once I reached airspeed, I lifted my feet into the seat, applying a little bit of brakes. I did not jump into my seat, I also did not sit down too soon. There's a bunch of things there. One, you never wanna just jump up into your seat. If you do that, that's a great way to initiate a riser twist and that is not what you want. Two, I did not sit down too soon and smack my cage into the ground. I waited to reach airspeed. The reason a lot of people smack into the ground and, and you know smack their cage into the ground is because they're nervous to run. You have to commit, you have to be willing to run, you have to give it everything you got. Once you get that glider up, I mean the moment that glider passes, what I call like the 80%, it's up 80% of the way, I'm into that power and I stay on that power, I stay on that power while leaning back. That way I'm not the one doing the running. I'm not sprinting down the field. It's pushing me down the field. I don't want to be the run sprinting down the field while trying to fly. I want it to push me down the field. Since I have that power, I may as well use it. So I use the power to push me down the field and I just kind of trot across the ground. Okay, in this screenshot right here, this launch right here, look at where my head is. If you take a close look at my head, you'll see it's looking over my right shoulder at that wing. What I do and what you should do every time you go to do a forward launch is look over your left shoulder and look over your right shoulder. Immediately identify which wing tip is lower and stare at it. You'll see it's a slight angle down to my right uh, as the pilot there in the paramotor. And so I'm looking over my right shoulder and I watched that the entire time. So the moment that glider comes up, I'm immediately identifying the low side and watching it. Why? Because you tend to run under the low side, you tend to lift the low side, or you tend to lift, you tend to run under the side you're watching more and you lift more on the side you're watching, hence recovering if it's coming down on that side. Okay guys, you can notice right after that wing kind of came up 
past the prop wash, I'm into that power. I mentioned this earlier. I do not want to be sprinting down that field any farther than I have to. The sooner I can get into the power, the better. So as soon as I can get into that power, watching that wing and leaning back, the better, because then I'm just trotting across the ground. I'm not sprinting across the ground. So the sooner you can get into that power, the better. Now the danger zone and the reason why new pilots aren't jumping into that power is because you want to, if you're new, you want to get it up and under control, then into the power. If you have a little bit of experience, as soon as you start getting it up, if you're watching that wing and you've got that good glider control skill, you know you're not gonna take a frontal, then you have no problem. The sooner you can ease into that power, as soon as it passes that prop wash, that sweet spot, the better. I might have mentioned this earlier, but did you notice how my head looked left, then right? And I immediately noticed which wing was lower. So as soon as I realized which wingtip is lower than the other wingtip, my head immediately hyper-focused on that side. You can see I'm staring at that side. I've released my left hand, it's A, I've released my left hand's A, and I'm pulling gentle left brake while still lifting the right hand's A. And you'll notice I'm staring at that wingtip. I'm now running under that wingtip, which you can't see in this video, and I'm correcting it to get it back above me. Once it's above me, you can notice I pull both brakes to stop it from overflying me. Then if you watched my hands, after I launched, my hands did not go shoot up. I pull brakes to get into the air. They do not shoot up into to the pulleys. I actually ease them up smoothly. The reason why is because I use a little brake to pop up into the sky. If I shoot my hands back up, it's going to cause the glider to dive back into the ground. So I pull the brakes. And as I'm climbing, I then ease my hands back up at the rate in which I stay directly above the ground or level. And then once I've reached my airspeed again, I can then, I can then pull the trims down or get back into the brakes. Okay guys, little recap here. Um, hopefully you guys can screenshot this or whatever, or what you know, save it if you want to. This is what I call my tips for a forward launch. First one, biggest one, lay out that glider perfectly into the wind. If it's just a little sideways, it means you're gonna have to correct it and it's gonna change directions in the wind. Second one, make sure you're facing the same direction that your glider is and that you're running into the wind. If you take off running sideways to the wind, that glider is gonna turn into the wind and you're gonna have to turn with it. It's just one more variable. Make sure you are centered on the glider before you start running. Look to your left, look to your right, find that center. Don't try and walk forward to tense those lines. You might snag a line or you might lift that glider up or blow up the leading edge over with your prop. 
take two good steps back. You want to have a little bit of room to speed up before you reach those uh, lines or before you tense those lines. Run into the wind. I already mentioned that, but I mentioned it again because it's a big deal. Make sure you run into the wind. Run like you mean it. You have to commit with everything you have. Hit it hard. Commit, commit, commit. You can save almost anything if you really try hard enough when it comes to a forward launch. It's all about committing. I've seen a lot of guys run. They're getting the inflation. It's working a little bit to the side. I'm like, no, 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 keep going. You could save it. They give it everything they've got, and they do end up pulling it off and succeeding with the launch. You pretty much can save any mistake you can make with a forward launch if you just try hard enough. Watch that glider. I know you want to watch your feet. I know you want to watch your feet. You want to see where you're running. You want to watch where you're going. Look up. Look to the left as you're running forward. Look to the right. Once it's above you, look up at the glider. The reason you want to look up so much is because if you look up, you'll lean back. And the difference between leaning forward and full throttle and leaning back and full throttle, I believe someone said once, I could be wrong, is like 80 pounds of thrust, which is a lot. Lean back. By looking up at that glider kind of forces you to lean back. By leaning back, all of a sudden you're being pushed by the motor versus having to do the running with the motor. Lean back, run under the glider, change direction with it if it's changing directions. Keep yourself under that thing just like a broomstick. The broomstick starts to fall to the side, your hand goes under it. If the glider starts to fall to the side, you need to go under it. Don't take a frontal. If the glider shoots up, if it's like shooting forward up above you, Get deep into those brakes and keep moving forward, but ease those hands back up after you've stopped that frontal because the glider has to reach airspeed. If you keep those brakes down, if you run with your brakes held all the way down, it won't ever reach the airspeed that it needs in order to lift you off the ground. There's a lot of variables, the glider size, wind, uh, altitude, your weight, all change how fast you need to be moving in order to get into the air, but you have to let that glider accelerate, and by getting those hands up, you allow that glider to accelerate, hence, or thus, getting you into the air. Once you've reached airspeed, once you're running and you're close to getting into the air, instead of just lightly coming off the ground, pull that six inches to 12 inches of brake, depending on your glider size. Obviously, if you're on a smaller glider, try not to pull as much brake. Larger gliders, you can get away with a little more. Pull a little bit of brakes to kind of pop you up off the ground, but do not shoot your hands up after you get off the ground. Slowly ease your hands off. It'll kind of level you out and keep yourself at level. If you start going back down towards the ground, pull a little bit more brake to bring yourself back up. Using that six inches to 12 inches of brake to pop yourself up off the ground slows down the glider and you have to ease those hands back up smoothly to allow it to re-accelerate to the speed that it naturally wants to fly. Anyways, those are my forward launch tips. My name's Trevor Steele. If you'd like to learn how to fly from us at the leading paramotor training school in the entire world, give us a call 800-707-2525. We run a 10-day paramotor training. By we, I mean Del Shanzi and myself. Highly suggested if you really want to learn how to fly the right way, come on down to Corpus Christi, Texas for one of our training classes. I personally will be there. Dell personally will be there. We do the training. We teach you everything. We don't just pass it off to some random instructor. We are out there, hands-on, teaching you exactly what you need to know. You don't just want to learn from some random guy. You want to make sure you learn from someone who really knows what they're doing. Anyways, if you want to check out that information, go to flyflattop.com or call us at 800-707-2525 and speak directly with us, aka me or Dell, one of the instructors, someone who actually knows what they're talking about. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.